I turned the power off. The environmental suit objected, of course, loudly, full of opinions. Effects were immediate with each breath colder than the last. The chill wrapped around my throat, tenderly squeezing it shut. Today, it was twenty-two breaths. Twenty-two breaths before the cold breached the suit's system, and it was too painful to keep breathing. Yesterday was twenty, a slight improvement. I flicked the power back on. The internal air reheated to tolerable levels while I held my breath. Anari had been right, of course. Just about one minute each time I tested it. The siren shut down soon after, sulking away. She'll have noticed my suit flatlining for a moment. All I needed to do now was wait until she came to check up on me. All scavengers, half hour until expedition departure. Wrap it up, people, we're on a clock. A voice crackled in over the wide area comms. That was a little earlier than I'd expected. It might not be enough time for my plan to get done. Around me, the white wastes stretched around, a flat surface broken up by the ruins stretching a mile around us. They say it was once supposed to be an ocean, maybe a few thousand years ago. Bundled up figures, half covered in ice, trawled around, wrapping up their last tasks before returning to the expedition rest stop. One of them was rapidly approaching me. The only identifying mark was the blood-red family sigil on her clothing's shoulders, the same one I had. My dear elder sister, ever vigilant that her younger brother wasn't up to anything stupid, again. Black, reflecting goggles obscured her face, but if I could see Kidra's eyes through all that gear, I'd imagine they would be mildly pissed with me as usual. You need to cut this out, she said. Each time I see your vitals drop like that... What if it's real, and that's the day I don't come to check? I waved away her question. Eh... I'd say I got what was coming to me and asked how much to put that on my tombstone. But since you happen to be here, lend me a hand real quick. 